Hi. As you have seen in all my videos, I never attack Muhammad. I simply read Islamic sources and then ask Muslims questions. So with that brief reminder, let's begin. If you're a Muslim, would you believe me if I told you that if Muhammad desired to take a married woman for himself, in Islam, the husband of that woman is morally obligated to divorce her so that Muhammad could marry her. Muhammad basically has the right to marry any woman he wants belonging to any man. Actually, let me test your Islamic faith. Put yourself in the following scenario. Let's say Muhammad comes to visit you at your house, but you're not home. Muhammad knocks on the door and your beautiful wife answers him. Later, you find out Muhammad wants to marry your wife. Would you agree with this decision of Muhammad? Would you give up your wife to fulfill the desire of your prophet? Remember, this is a test of your faith, so please be honest. Generally, the Qur'an says if you have any dispute or resistance to Muhammad's decisions, then you are not a true believer. The Qur'an, chapter 4, verse 65 says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ which translates as, But no, by your Lord, they can have no faith, or they will not believe, until they make you, meaning Muhammad, judge in all disputes between them, and find in themselves no resistance against your decisions, and accept them with full submission. I would say the majority of you Muslims watching this video have failed this faith test and have become disbelievers because you would not give up your wife to Muhammad. Again, please be honest, you would resist Muhammad's decision in this case. Now, some of you might be saying this is ridiculous, this kind of faith test has no historical basis in the teachings of Islam, so you think you can remain a Muslim. Well, let's look at the Islamic sources to see if that's true. It is historically known that Muhammad had an adopted son named Zayd bin Haritha, who was also known as Zayd bin Muhammad, meaning Zayd, the son of Muhammad. In the History of At-Tabari, Volume 8, page 2, we read about a very troubling event. Basically, Muhammad went to visit Zayd, but Zayd was not home. Muhammad went to the door and saw Zayd's beautiful wife, Zainab, inside wearing very little clothing. Muhammad then secretly liked Zayd's wife and wanted to marry her. Zayd offered to leave her for Muhammad, but Muhammad told him to keep his wife. On page 4, we read a shorter version of the story. The Messenger of God, meaning Muhammad, had married Zayd bin Haritha to Zainab bin Tujahsh, his paternal aunt's daughter. One day, the Messenger of God went out looking for Zayd, now, there was a covering of hair cloth over the doorway, but the wind had lifted the covering so that the doorway was uncovered. Zainab was in her chamber, undressed, and admiration for her entered the heart of the Prophet. After that happened, she was made unattractive to the other man, that refers to her husband, Zaid. So he came and said, Messenger of God, I want to separate myself from my companion. Muhammad asked, What is wrong? Has anything on her part disquieted you? No, by God, replied Zayd, nothing she has done has disquieted me, messenger of God, nor have I seen anything but good. The messenger of God said to him, keep your wife to yourself and fear God. That is the meaning of the word of God. And when you said unto him, on whom God has conferred favor and you have conferred favor, keep your wife to yourself and fear God, and you did hide in your mind that which God was to bring to light. You did hide in your mind the thought that if he separates himself from her, I will marry her. Now, like any father wanting to marry his adopted son's wife, Muhammad naturally would have been worried about the gossip of the people. So, he claimed to receive a revelation, Quran chapter 33, verse 37, to justify the marriage. It says, first quoting the Arabic, وَإِذْ تَقُولُ لِلَّذِي أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَأَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِ أَمْسِكْ عَلَيْكَ زَوْجَكَ وَاتَّقِ اللَّهَ وَتُخْفِي فِي نَفْسِكَ مَا اللَّهُ مُبْدِيهِ وَتَخْشَى النَّاسَ وَاللَّهُ أَحَقُّ أَنْ تَخْشَاهِ 
فلما قضى زيد منها وطرا زوجناكها لكي لا يكون على المؤمنين حرج في أزواج أدعيائهم إذا قضوا منهن وطرا وكان أمر الله مفعولا which translates as and O Muhammad when you said to him on whom Allah has bestowed grace and you have done favor keep your wife to yourself and fear Allah but you did hide in yourself that which Allah will make manifest you did fear the people whereas Allah had a better right that you should fear him so when Zayd had accomplished his desire from her we gave her to you in marriage so that there may be no difficulty to the believers in respect of the wives of their adopted sons when the latter have no desire to keep them and Allah's command must be fulfilled. But wait, Muhammad's convenient revelation didn't stop the people from criticizing him for marrying Zainab. So he claimed to receive yet another revelation, this time Quran chapter 33 verses 4 to 5, which basically says adopted sons are not real sons. And if adopted sons aren't real sons, then Zainab wasn't really his daughter-in-law. So Muhammad ends up free from criticism. Let's read the verse. وَمَا جَعَلَ أَدْعِيَاءَكُمْ أَبْنَاءَكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ قَوْلُكُمْ بِأَفْوَاهِكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَقُولُ الْحَقَّ وَهُوَ يَهْدِي السَّبِيلِ Which translates as, Nor has he made your adopted sons your real sons. That is but your saying with your mouths. But Allah says the truth, and he guides to the right way. Verse 5 says, أُدْعُوهُمْ لِآبَائِهِمْ هُوَ أَقْسَطُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Which translates as, Call them, meaning adopted sons, by the names of their fathers. That is more just with Allah. And according to the Quranic commentary, Tafsir ibn Kathir, these verses actually abolished adoption in Islam. Now some of you Muslims might be questioning the validity of this story by claiming that it's absurd that Muhammad would one day become aware of Zainab's beauty after knowing her all her life. And if Zainab's beauty is the reason for Muhammad marrying her, then he would have married her himself in the first place rather than arranging her marriage to Zayd. Well, my answer is yes, Muhammad would have seen Zainab before, but he would not have seen how her body was sexually attractive until he saw her alone in her house in very little clothing in the absence of Zayd. This would have been the first time Muhammad saw her in that way. Now here are my questions for Muslims. Question number one. Why did Muhammad speak loud enough for Zainab to hear him? Did he want her to know he was sexually attracted to her? Muhammad's audible words destroyed Zayd's marriage. Maybe Zayd could have kept his wife if Muhammad had remained silent. Question number two. Think about this for a minute. In Quran chapter 33 verse 37, Allah desperately wants people to know it's okay to marry the divorced wives of adopted sons. To prove this, Allah has Muhammad marry Zainab. But in Quran chapter 33 verses 4 to 5, Allah abolished adoption, which means Muslim men will never adopt sons anyway, so there will never be any worry about whether a Muslim man can marry the divorced wife of his adopted son or not. So my question is, if adoption was going to be abolished anyway, what was the point of Allah revealing Quran chapter 33 verse 37 in the first place? Was it only to satisfy Muhammad's desires? Question number three is about Muhammad looking at Zainab's body and not lowering his gaze. Now, you Muslims will say a sudden glance or an unintentional look is forgiven. That's fine. But my question is, what about a forbidden look which leads to the destruction of someone else's marriage? Is that innocent? Question number four. Remember, Quran chapter 33 verse 37 has Muhammad telling Zayd, keep your wife and fear Allah. But it also says Muhammad hid inside himself some secret thoughts or some intention which Allah was going to make known, and Muhammad feared the people's reaction. Another official Quranic commentary, Tafsirul Jalalain, comments on this verse saying, quote, But you, Muhammad, had hidden in your heart what God was to disclose, what he was to manifest of your love for her, and of the fact that should Zayd part with her, you would marry her, and you feared people would say, He has married his son's wife. 
So my fourth question is, don't you see any problem in Muhammad wanting to marry another man's wife? It seems Muhammad himself saw the problems in this scenario because he was afraid of public opinion. Also, if Muhammad saw problems in this scenario but Allah didn't, does this mean Muhammad had a higher moral standard than Allah himself? Thank you for watching.